Trevor Love from Orthomolecular Products. Uh, welcome to the Moses Lake Professional Pharmacy Show. Thank you for being on today. Thank you, Sean. Good to be here. Yeah. So we're going to start out. We're going to do a weekly uh, talk on some kind of supplement. And today we're going to talk about probiotics. And when I was at a, uh, when I met with you a few weeks ago, you talked about why some probi probiotics do not work. Educate mm -hmm. us on that. Yeah. So when you're looking at a probiotic, the first thing that matters is it uh, alive inside the capsule. So many probiotics aren't effective, frankly, because they're sitting on the shelf and they're no longer alive at the dose that's on the, the box. So ultimately, when you look at a box on the shelf, you may see something like um, a retail brand that says at manufacturing date, you see 10 to the ninth power. So that's 1 billion CFUs of probiotics, right? But then it'll say, at best by date, one times 10 to the seventh power. And many people will brush that off and say, oh, okay, that just means it's slowly dying off. One times 10 to the seventh power is 10 million CFU. So you went from 1 billion right. to 10 million. So that's a huge deal. So at the end of the day, the number one reason why probiotics don't work is because many companies, uh, typically retail companies, aren't stability testing to guarantee you the dose at when you have that product in your hands. They have to be at the clinical dose and they have to be stability tested to guarantee that it still has the live bacteria at that dose. So frankly, it's it's the answer would be underdosing. That definitely makes sense. Now, what about, um, what kind of probiotics, you know, are good bacteria and good yeast? We'll get into the yeast later, but what are some of the um, things we're looking for as far as the good, the good bacteria? Mm -hmm. Um, so typically what you see in the scientific community is a broad based approach. So you have something called the phylogenetic tree and it's just a bacteria tree. And really that tree illustrates all the different species of bacteria. But when you look at the human intestinal tract and as it travels down the intestines, we have different pHs and different probiotics that like to colonize similar to geography of uh, the earth, right? We have different populations that colonize in different places. So the most researched and the most uh, philosophically sound approach is using a diverse group of probiotics, not a, not a hundred of them, but not just one. So what we're looking at is about six, seven, eight strains that can colonize at different parts of the GI tract. And these strains represent the largest uh, populations of probiotics that colonize in these different portions. So you're, you're covering all bases. Um, you're not using one strain and missing a lot of bases, but you're also not using a hundred strains and then not having it, any type of clinical dose. Right. So tell us a little bit, one thing that separates some probiotics, and it's what I like about orthobiotic from orthomolecular, is it has a non-pathogenic yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii in it. Tell us about that. Right. So one of the reasons, going back to your first question about why some probiotics don't work is because of die-off. So the, the stomach is a very aggressive place on purpose as we were designed to kill off pathogenic bacteria. But oftentimes when you insert probiotics into the stomach, there is some die-off. So one of the strains, a non-pathogenic probiotic yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii is 100% um, resistant to antibiotics and a very, very resilient strain. So this is something that's used for diarrhea, antibiotic associated diarrhea. It's used for C. diff infections in hospitals. Um, it's a very, very resilient anti-inflammatory non-pathogenic yeast that can withstand any antibiotic run. So this is the reason why orthobiotic contains that 3 billion uh, CFU dose of Saccharomyces boulardii is because it cannot be killed by antibiotics. And this gives you the ability to use this when you're taking antibiotics, coming off of it, antibiotics, or have a history of antibiotic use in your past. I'm going to give a little commentary on probiotics and why I think they're important. Thank you mm -hmm. for all that, Trevor. Um, if we don't have the good bacteria and the good flora in our gut, we cannot absorb nutrients, whether it be macronutrients or micronutrients from multivitamin and multimineral or just our food in general. So I believe a probiotic is just as important or maybe more important than a multivitamin multimineral because if we don't have a healthy gut to absorb that those things, it's useless. So that's why I believe probiotics are so important. And anytime somebody has any kind of GI complaint, whether it be reflux, whether it be diarrhea, whether it be constipation, whether it be IBS, anytime they have some kind of gastrointestinal problem, my first go-to is probiotics. So, Agreed. Yeah. What would you like to add to this, Trevor, as we wind this up? 
Uh, I think just remember, we, we kind of break this down as um, three different categories for probiotics, protective, metabolic, and structural. So just remember, pr probiotics can protect the gut. They can help your metabolic function, like you just mentioned, for micronutrients and macronutrient absorption. And then structural, probiotics are structurally required for the intestinal tract to operate the way it is. And remember, 80%-ish of our immune system lines the intestinal tract. So a huge structural component of that entire immune system is the way our immune system interacts with our microbiota, which is our, um, our healthy bacteria. All right, Trevor. Well, thank you for all that today. Thank you, Sean.